darling car of 2017 was the Alpine A110. It looks like the classic it shares its name with. It drove brilliantly, but most importantly, it offered a middle ground between the hardcore cars from Lotus and the spendy ones from Porsche. The A110 is enough for most, but some people can't resist tweaking. Litchfield, though they of making GTRs breathe fire and GR Yaris's into miniature time attack cars, decided that the Alpine A110 could do with a spit polish, just here and there. So we press sport in the big red car, everything becomes a little sharper, we pull some paddles and then go, ooh, this is good, this is going to be a good day, because <laughs> it's a driver's car this. What's happened here then? Well, first and foremost, Litchfield has been playing with power. It's done some tweaking to the Alpine A110's 1.8 litre turbocharged four cylinder motor. It now produces 300 horsepower and 300 pound foot. That's over 50 more horses and over 60 more pounds and feet. Now, Litchfield reckons it'll get from 0 to 62 in 4.2 seconds. That's a decent little chunk off the stock car's time. Under the skin, Litchfield has beefed up the suspension with its own spec Nitron R1 adjustable dampers with 26 clicks of adjustment for a more adaptable ride than the standard car. And the team from Tewkesbury has given the exhaust some extra growl. Cosmetically, bar the big Litchfield sticker down the side, this looks like an ordinary Alpine A110. Now that's a good thing because an A110, it's all about eschewing anything that's unnecessary. Anything that doesn't need to be here isn't. As such, there are no lumps and bumps and spoilers and vents that say, I'm sporty, look at me. The A110, it's honest. Litchfield hasn't messed with the two things that make the original car so wonderful, its layout and its weight. Admittedly, changing the layout would be needless, but the motor remains in the middle and is attached to a seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. The machines are faster than man, so there is no manual available. On the weight front, the Alpine keeps it cool at 1,100-ish kilos. Yeah, it might be a little heavier than a Lotus, but there's a lot more space and refinement. And it might be a lot lighter than a Porsche, but that kind of piles on the technology so it can be every car to every person in every situation. In here, there's just enough tech to do exactly what you want it to do, but not so much you'll be overwhelmed. It's a sort of Goldilocks porridge situation. The standard car comes with more modest power and a different, softer suspension setup. It's designed to be driven for the joy of driving, not setting lap records. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And this leads us to the big question. Has Litchfield messed it up? People go for the Alpine because they know what it can do. And what it does is it makes driving fun. It's not too heavy handed. So the steering isn't amazingly heavy every time you go around a corner. The suspension doesn't destroy your spine just for the privilege of having a sports car. The power doesn't overwhelm the vehicle. So when you are pinging it from corner to corner, it doesn't try and spit you off the road if you do something ever so slightly wrong. Everything about it is metered out perfectly for driver enjoyment. And Litchfield, being Litchfield, has decided it wants to do that, but better. They've not gone in and fiddled with steering racks and they've not played with layouts and they've not given it too much power. 300 horsepower these days isn't that much, but neither is 1100 kilos. The combination of those two actually gives this a lot more punch than you'd expect it to. And in the process, actually makes it feel a lot better than some more powerful but heavier cars out there. What this is all about is confidence-inspiring driving. You want something that supports you, but not so much you start getting a little bit too Larry. I mean, you can get Larry. There's a track mode just for that. But out on a country road, you want to have fun. <laughs> The same goes with Litchfield's suspension setup because the standard car is really nicely damped. It feels really, really smooth. The Litchfield Nitron system, it is of course adjustable so you can make it extra hard or extra soft and floppy. In its road setting, which is what we're in, it reminds me a little bit of old McLarens, that old MP4 12C, when everyone was like, well, it, it feels 
oddly smooth. Like, it, a sports car shouldn't feel like this. I should be uncomfortable. This should be unpleasant. But it's not. I'm comfortable here. Nasty British B roads, like the ones we've been playing on, aren't a problem. I've got the refinement of a far more grown-up car, and I've got the fun of a far less mature car. Again, Goldilocks, this setup's just blinding. It handles so well, and you can play with the chassis so much. Litchfield has also tweaked the exhaust. It's a 1.8 litre four-cylinder engine with a turbocharger on it. It's never going to sound like angels, harps and cherubs singing. And it can be a little bit hair dryery if you rev it too hard. But you get a nice rorty burble, nice hollow sound to it. It's... I dig it. On the inside of the car, it sounds pretty ace, but I don't think it's offensive enough to irritate your neighbours. It's a really good sports car. I mean, it, it still comes with the annoyances that you get in an Alpine. So the touchscreen's a bit naff, and the, it's got this weird plastic lump that my mum's Clio had in 2004. And I think still there's too much plastic for a car that retails at around 50 grand. But it's a great car. I don't understand why more people don't buy them, except I do, as do you. This is the car that everyone will recommend, saying, oh, you've got to buy an Alpine. And then just as you get to the Alpine showroom, you go, yeah, but I really want a Porsche. Which is annoying, because it means in 10 years' time, when I can afford one of these, there won't be any on the used market. So can more of you please buy them? That'd be great, because I want one, and I want to give it to Litchfield to make it do stuff like this. Litchfield isn't the only company that gives Alpines a going over. The Life A110 cars, for example, make all manner of tweaks from power to springs to small stuff like new paddle shifters. Cars like this, built for enthusiasts to simply enjoy, aren't just there to drive, but to tinker with, within reason. Going in and changing something that spoils the character of the car is just foolish. It's a bit like trying to turn an MX-5 into a luxury cruiser or a Rolls-Royce into a track wrap. It just seems a bit dim. However, using your powers for good and enhancing these things, that's smart business. The same but better, or the same but more, can make the world of difference. The base A110, the vanilla car, is absolutely brilliant. Everyone who's driven it agrees it's just right. It's set up for drivers who enjoy driving. It's not too harsh, it's not too fast, it won't try and eat you. It's brilliantly balanced and it feels just bang on. What Litchfield has done is it's taken everything that's good about it and enhanced it. This is Alpine Plus. If you're done with the standard experience, this will make it better.